It's Pyram King, and I'm really excited to bring to you a free adventure for Foundry that is system agnostic. That's right, you can run this on any game system in Foundry. Now, before I get started, a huge shout out to my supporters making all of this happen. The video guides, the free PDF guides, the Foundry adventure modules. We have over 40 adventure modules already, expanding the legends of Brovia, adding new content. We got a huge new project for you next year. If you'd like to join me on this epic adventure, you can by becoming a donating member by clicking on that membership link in the description down below. Now, one of the most common questions that I receive at least once a week is somebody says, we would love to play Legends of Barovia or, or one of your adventures, but we don't play in 5th edition. We play in Pathfinder 2 or Warhammer Fantasy or Shadow Dark or Shadow of the Demon Lords. And I spent a lot of time looking into releasing Foundry adventures in all these different systems and I started pulling my hair out because all of those stab blocks, all of those items, all of those mechanics, I would have to learn all of these systems. It was going to be a daunting task. And so I kind of put it aside. And I had a conversation recently, actually last month, with Blair, our resident wizard foundry expert. And he said, you know what? We could make a system agnostic version that can run on every single system. And I said, really? And he goes, yeah. So we dived into it here in December, tested it out, and it works. And it's amazing. So to launch these new updates, we are going to give away for free the Count's Manor Adventure System Agnostic. This is a gothic horror adventure in a manor. It's got a crypt and a dungeon. It can be run as a one-shot or it's a great introduction adventure to Curse of Strahd or Legends of Barovia. We released this for D&D 5th Edition and Foundry as a free adventure during Halloween. And we had an overwhelming response, over a thousand downloads. So we're going to do this again, but System Agnostic for this holiday season to kick off all of our updates. And starting in January, we're gonna begin releasing updates to Legends of Barovia System Agnostic. So let's jump in to see this adventure. How do you download it? How does it work and what do you need to do? So the first thing we need to do is we need to go to the website and download Counts Banner. It's absolutely free. You just click on Get Now here, boom pops up, you click on checkout, and you're gonna get this little message here at the top of the checkout. Now you can go ahead and click on get your items. That'll give you a zip file of the adventure if you wanna do a manual install, but we're gonna just install it with the JSON file. And you're gonna see right here, it says, there's a link here to the adventure. You're gonna hit control copy, control C. We're gonna go into Foundry, and we're gonna paste this in the add-on modules. Now, I'm going to be doing this in uh, Forge, but it's going to be the exact same way that you do it if you're going to be self-hosting. So I'm going to click on uh, down here in the manifest URL. I'm going to paste in that HTML link with a JSON file and click install. Now, the first thing it's going to do is it's going to start installing the adventure, but it also has a dependency on Monk's active tile triggers, which I use to teleport between floors and some other little magic that we like to do. And it's going to pop up here and says install all dependencies automatically. You're going to click yes. It's going to install that as well. And when that's done, we're just going to have to close this here. And you're going to see that we have both the Count's Manor adventure and Monk's tile trigger uh, both installed. Now, whether you're running 5th edition or any adventure, it's only going to be one stall. It includes everything that you need in that one installation. The next thing, we need to make sure we have our game system that we're going to use. I have several of them installed, and we're going to install this twice. I'm going to do one in uh, Shadow, of the Demon, uh, Shadow of the Demon Lord, and I'll do one in Pathfinder 2nd Edition and show you some things to do in Pathfinder because I get that one asked a lot. So we go to Game Worlds, and we're going to create our first Game World, and we're going to do Shadow of the Demon, Shadow of the Demon Lord, Count's Manor. There we go. And you got to make sure to select your game system in here, Shadow of the Demon Lord, and Create World. And there we go. We have it created. We just going to have to import everything. So we're going to open up that world as the Game Master. It's really easy. Select Game Master, join the session. And the first thing we're going to have to do is select and activate that uh, module here. So we're going to go over to the little gear icons up in the upper right. That's game settings. Scroll down and click on manage modules and select uh, counts manner and also enable monks active tile triggers and hit save settings. 
Okay, so now it's gonna save, it's gonna reload everything. Again, I'm doing this on the Forge, which is a cloud-based hosting system, but if you're self-hosting, it works the exact same way. The next thing we do is we're gonna to go to our compendiums and you're gonna see a new adventure compendium called COS Counts Manor SA. Now SA stands for System Agnostic. You're gonna click on that. Over here it pops up and you're gonna get a pop-up window right here and you'll scroll to the bottom and hit Import Adventure. And there it is, it's imported. The first thing that's gonna pop up is that theater of the mind image of the Counts Manor and we're pretty much ready to go here. Now, what do you get with a system agnostic version? And this is kind of important to understand how Foundry works. There are two databases in Foundry that are system specific. That's actors and items. And that obviously makes sense. Every system, uh, role-playing system uses a different mechanic, whether it's dice or stat blocks or items. And so for an agnostic system to work, we do not include the actors or the items, but everything else is included. So for instance, all the scenes, now in Counts Matter, we have, let me see, four or five, uh, six battle maps. I'll show you a couple of those battle maps here. For instance, here's the manor here. These battle maps are gorgeous. They're made by DM Andy. Each one of these uh, rooms has its uh, pinned is a journal entry. So we just click on the journal entry here and it comes up there with all the stuff that you need to run this adventure. There's the read aloud text, the information for every single room. And these are also pinned to the battle maps. In addition to the battle maps, we have theater of the mind maps, and I really love using these. For instance, let's say you're in the dining room, right? And while you're in the dining room, you can drag your tokens in here, and this kind of creates a, a, a view of what it looks like, so you, you as a game master can spend less time on the description and more on the role-playing element. It's a common frame of, of reference, so I really love using theater of the mind maps. We have a whole bunch of them here, from the crypt to the manor, uh, to the dining room, the dungeon, and everything. It's really fun, and again, on here, you have those pin notes for the dining room so you can you have the read aloud text with the picture in here as well now another thing i love to add to my adventures are player handouts and we have those here as well they're pdf handouts and what's really cool about this is your players will see a folder pop-up called player handouts or pdf handouts now it'll be completely empty and we've got all these handouts that the players can find as they explore the manor in the crypt in the dungeon but you're going to notice as the game master, there's little eyes with a line through. This means that the players can't see any of these things. So for instance, let's say they're in the library and they discover the book, The Court of Ravenloft. You're going to select that here and you've got this beautiful PDF handout of The Court of Ravenloft. It has some lore and some information, really cool, maybe some clues to solve some, some riddles or some puzzles for them. And you're going to right click on this, configure ownership and select owner for all players and now what's going to happen on, is on the player when they're logged in under pdf handouts they're going to have a new handout they can see and they can open it at any time and take a look at this uh at this player handout in this case it's a book so we got letters and notes and journals and books and spells and everything really fun thing that we can do in foundries do these player handouts obviously you can also hear the music going on in the background i'll turn that down a little bit but we have all the ambient sounds and music as well in here. So everything you need to run it, except for the actors and uh, the items. That's something that you're going to have to install. Now I'm gonna do this again in Pathfinder and I'm gonna show you how to set up those actors and those items. And I get Pathfinder asked a lot. A lot of people like to use Pathfinder because it's similar to D&D 5th edition. So let's go ahead and do that now. We're gonna go ahead and return to setup and I'm gonna go ahead and install and create a world for Pathfinders. Real simple again, I'm gonna do uh, PF2 uh, counts manner, make sure I set up uh, the game system for Pathfinder second edition. There we go, we're gonna go ahead and open that up. And again, select the module and import the adventure. We're ready to go. And I'm gonna show you how to do those actors. I got a couple little notes in there that are important for you to follow along so it makes your life easy as the game master setting this up. So again, we're gonna go in here and install, make sure, well, we already installed it, we gotta make sure we select the modules, hitting the game settings, manage modules, uh, let's see, manage modules, counts manner, hit yes, save, there we go. It's gonna reload here with what we just saved so we can import everything that we need. 
I'm just gonna turn these off here, they're a little annoying. We're gonna go into the compendium folder and we're gonna see the adventure here counts manner SA. Again, it stands for system agnostic. And we're going to import this adventure into our Pathfinder world. And there we go, just like we did for Shadow of the Demon Lord. But now we need to create those actors. And I'm gonna tell you what I did. I did two things to make your life a little easier as you set this up for your game setting. The first thing is, um, in, the, in the journal entries, you're gonna see, for instance, in the manor, if we go to the balcony, for instance, it says in here that there's animated armor and a great sword. Every actor in every item is typed in bold, italics, and underlined. This lets you know that there's an actor or an item required. So on the balcony, in the manor, there's an animated armor and a great sword. If we go to the actual uh, map here in the battle maps, and that's on the third floor, we're gonna activate that scene. We have that scene activated here, and you're gonna see the balcony here. You're gonna notice on the battle map that I also have tokens already on the battle map. Now you're gonna go, wait a second, I thought you didn't include actors. I didn't, I did include the tokens. And I did this for two reasons. Number one, so you can see what the token looks like. And number two, you can see where on the map that token should be. So if I try to click on this token, it says this token references an actor which no longer exists. And this is what we need to do for our particular game system. So here in Pathfinder 2, if you install Pathfinder 2, it includes the bestiaries, and this includes your creatures and your monsters. So we're gonna find animated armor, animated armor, and we're gonna import an animated armor into there, and we have an actor, animated armor in there. Unfortunately, we don't have the nice cool picture of that animated armor, and that's what we wanna do next. So we're gonna click on the picture, and it's going to bring up some menus here. Now, if you are self-hosting, you wanna click on user data, you wanna click on modules, counts manner, and you're gonna get another folder, let's say uh, actors, uh, it's gonna say assets, and it's gonna say actors, and you can select an actors on there. However, if you're installing on Forge, all of those assets are stored into the Forge assets on the cloud. So here we're gonna have to click on Forge assets. We're gonna click find modules, uh, counts manner, assets, and actors. And you can click on this so you can see the picture. There's the animated armor. We're gonna select that and click select file. And there it's popped up in here. We can double check the prototype uh, token. Animated armor, it's in there as well. And there we have our animated armor now uh, in here ready to go. And so what we can do is we can drag that onto the map and we can delete the previous animated armor and now we have our animated armor all done for Pathfinder 2. Now, you might wanna make some adjustments to your stat blocks or any attributes or any items it may have, but it's all ready to go. Now, we noticed in the balcony, it also said there was a great sword. Again, we're gonna do this in uh, Pathfinder. You're gonna click on your, um, your character builds in here, and I believe you have equipment, and you're just gonna type in great sword. We have a great sword we need to get. There it is. And you're gonna import that, and now you have your great sword in here ready to go. So again, read through the adventure. You're gonna see if it's bold, italics, and underlined, it's gonna be an actor, or it's gonna be an item. You're gonna to need to make sure to import those or create those based on the game system that you're using. Now, one other note, in this particular game, we have some unique creatures with some unique stat blocks. And if you want to look at what those stat blocks look like in D&D 5e, but you're running in Shadow of the Demon Lord or Shadow Dark or some other system, what I suggest to do is go and download the free Counts Manor PDF. And in the back of the PDF, uh, you're going to find in the back is in the appendix are the stat blocks of those special uh, creatures that are for 5e. But it's going to give you an idea about the kind of hit points and kind of special abilities that they have in here, so it'll help you maybe design your own character. So make sure you go ahead and download the PDF guide as well because it includes those stat blocks in there. It's pretty helpful. Now I'm gonna do this one last time, but I'm gonna do it in fifth edition because we've made a slight change in there and our wizard Blair, Foundry Wizard Blair, put a special pop-up in there. Make sure you're installing the right one. So we're gonna go back to our system, uh, uh, return to the setup, and we're gonna do this in fifth edition. Now, I'm gonna show you there's a little bit different in fifth edition. 
So we're going to create a world here. We're going to call it uh, 5e counts manner. Make sure we select D&D 5th edition, create the world. And there we go. We're going to hit play. Do the same thing we did before, but you're going to notice a little difference in here this time. All right, game master, ba boom. And here we go. We're going to go in here and select the manage modules, the counts manner, monks after tile triggers, save, yes. It's going to reload. And you're going to notice something different that you won't see in the other system. So when, when we click on our compendium, you're going to have two versions here. One that's going to say 5e and one that's going to say SA. Now, if you're in the if you're in D&D 5e and you click the set SA, you're going to get a pop up message saying, uh, would you like to open the 5e version instead? So this is just a friendly reminder, uh, Blair included, because if you're running fifth edition, you don't want to install the system agnostic one. You want all those actors and items as well. So you hit switch. It switches it over here to 5e. You see 5e over here and you're going to notice it's going to have actors and items in there as well. You're going to go ahead and import your adventure. Works just the same. The only difference now is you're going to get all those actors in here. Here's all your actors are all in there already with their stat blocks. There's the animated arm, armor and all those items in here as well. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoy and download this adventure. I would really love to hear how your adventure went, especially if you're playing in Shadow Dark or Mithras or Warhammer Fantasy. Leave your, your comments in the uh, down below in the comment section or join us on Discord and share your experience in running Counts Manor in the system of your preference. And until next time, may all your roles be critically successful. And a special shout out and thank you to all of my amazing legendary supporters.